Okay. Oops. Welcome. Welcome back. So <clears throat> we have we have computed using the uh, replica trick and this replica symmetric assumption the average value of uh, of the minimal loss uh, as a function of alpha and and sigma square and we have seen that there is a critical value of uh, of alpha beyond which the system is of equation is typically incompatible and 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 this this critical value clearly moves to the left as we increase the um the noise now um rachel and and jan have developed using objects that we have computed already uh uh, a more an even more powerful approach uh, to compute not just the average value but the full distribution so let's call it the full distribution of uh, imin so the minimal loss in the large and limit which is what essentially I wanted to, to do, uh, just, just to present the approach. And then it, it's just a lot of calculations. So we'll see what, how much can I, can I cover? But then in the end, uh, there, is a, there is a final, uh, final formula. What, what is important here is the method. Um, so what they, uh, what they do is they assume uh, a large deviation uh, function, motivated by similar problems where such large deviation uh, approach uh, is uh, correct. So they assume that in the large and limit, the full probability distribution of the minimal, of the minimal loss is uh, um, as this form, R of E exponential of minus N L of E, where E is, E min divided by uh, n. So I'm not sure how familiar you are with the uh, theory of large deviations and uh, and the fact that probability distribution, depending on on a parameter, on la typically a large parameter, can uh, develop this this type of uh, of form. So I just prepared here like a, a crash course on on large deviations. Uh, using the simplest example of coin uh, coin tosses, so this p of m comma n is uh, the probability of getting exactly m tails in a sequence of n coin tosses, and this is an exact uh, result where, of course, the the binomial term takes into account different permutations of the of the sequence of adds and and tails. So the idea of large deviations is encoded in this uh, simple scheme. So if you plug in the number n equals 100 and m equals 90, so what is the probability of getting 90 heads in, uh, in a sequence of 100 coin tosses? This probability is very tiny, of course. This is a very rare, rare event. Uh, this probability is 10 to the minus 17. But then if you, if you double both uh, these numbers, and you ask, what is the probability of getting 180 heads out of uh, 200, 200 tosses? What can you guess what the exponent would be here? Like roughly, do we have an intuition of, of this is also a very, uh, very rare event, right? Around 30, the exact number is minus 33. So this event is rare, but this event is 16 orders of magnitude rarer. Just because, and, and the ratio is the same, just because we have, we have doubled the, the number of, uh, of coins, uh, of tosses. So this means that this probability, which is an exact result, in, in, in the limit n to infinity, when you scale m as x times n, has a probability that decays exponentially fast in the number of, uh, of tosses. And, uh, and the coefficient of this uh, exponentially fast decay is called the rate function or the large deviation function that can be computed exactly for this, for this problem. It has a symmetric shape with a minimum, which is also a zero at one half. So the rate function has, has a zero and the minimum value at the most probable value. 
which corresponds to the least suppression of this exponential decay. And then it goes, it goes up, up to the level log two, when x is equal to one or, or zero. Why is it log two? Well, because the probability of getting a uh, hundred uh, tails or a hundred heads out of a hundred tosses is just one half to the power n, which clearly is e to the minus n log two. So the rate function is a very fundamental object because it, it connects typical fluctuations with rare events where, where you essentially observe uh, a, a streak of completely unlikely, unlikely events, right? Okay, that's uh, that's large deviations in 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 two minutes. If you can do better than that, well, be my guest. Okay, so um, this is this is the uh, the thing we we have a, a large parameter n and we assume a large deviation form for uh, e min. So what uh, what Rachel and Jan uh, proposes and and earlier on Jan and uh, and Pierre Le Dussol, uh, they propose to analyze the replicated partition function that we have defined uh, before, but in a different limit. So in the limit, when beta goes to infinity, n goes to zero, which is pretty much what, what we did before in a different order, but assuming that n beta is equal to a fixed value s. And the claim is that this object in this limit is related to the large deviation function L, L of E. This, this is not a, the Lagrangian, this is just a, the symbol is, is particularly bad, but this is just the large deviation function for this problem. How do we see this? Well, let's try to write a chain of uh, equalities. So we raise this to the uh, exponent. So we write this as exponential of n log z, okay? And then uh, we use the fact that little n is s over beta. So we get limit beta to infinity of exponential of s over beta log z, okay? But then we use the fact that e min, the minimal loss is minus limit beta to infinity of one over beta log z, right? Which is, which is the, essentially the starting, the starting point of the previous lecture. And if we, if we do that, then we can, we can use this, the fact that here we have one over beta log Z and replace this with E min. E min with a minus sign, of course, because of this minus sign here. Well, the, we, we are taking the limit. Yeah, yeah, but uh, outside of the equation. Yeah, but, but, but I've got 10 pages. Yeah. So <laughs> you, you, you will need to help me out here because, <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's, uh, I think we've, we've done worse, worse thing in the yeah. previous hour. This is, so we can, we can probably proceed here, but, um, okay, so the, the idea would, would be that, that you proceed and, uh, and you write that this is exponential of minus s n e hat. So essentially the idea is that this object in this, in this peculiar limit is related to the Laplace transform of, uh, of the random variable that you are, that you are uh, after. So the conclusion would be that the limit beta is the integral d 
E, P N E, exponential of minus N S E. Okay. And then what you do is the standard thing, which is you replace the ansatz in, in there, the large deviation ansatz inside the integral. So you say that this uh, object we assume is R of E exponential of minus N L of E hat. And then you evaluate this, uh, this integral for, for, large, for large N because we have exponential of minus N into something. So for, for large N, this integral should go as exponential of minus N what is there, uh, S E plus L of E. Right? Let me see. Just lost my choke. Okay where S is the parameter that fixes the product N times B. E sorry. sorry? E hat is integrated over your taking the shift or? Uh, yeah, so this, this uh, yet, so let me, let, me, um, let me be more precise. So this, this would be a function of S when you evaluate this yeah. integral in a, in a southern point, where of course you have to, you have to extremize over, over E hat. So phi of S is in particular, in this case, I think is minus the minimum over E hat, sorry, minus the minimum over E hat of S E hat plus L. Okay, so the, the idea is that if you can extract this, this limit out of the object that we have already computed uh, and put it in a, in a large deviation form, depending on the parameter S, then this uh, function, the rate function in the Laplace space is related via Legendre transform to the rate function in real space. So what you have to do now is to invert the Legendre transform and uh, carve out the rate function in real space from this, this object phi. So the idea would be the, the, the general framework of the method is that the rate function in real space would be minus, would be given by minus E hat S star plus phi of S star where S star is the solution of the following equation. Pierre Paolo, isn't it com completely equivalent? I mean, like if it's I start from what you have here, limit of beta going to infinity. If, if I replace the limit beta going to infinity by a limit n going to infinity, and I plug uh, one over n and take the log of this, I think this is the log moment generating function uh, in, in large deviations, the, the usual definition of the log moment generating function for E. Yeah, <coughs> which but, is... Yeah. Yeah. Which which would establish the fact that that phi of s is precisely uh, is some sort of uh, moment or cumulant generating yeah. function. Yeah. And then problem. then by Gartner Ellis you get the yeah. the right function. Yeah. This is what you're doing. Exactly. But, but so like if you really follow the recipe from large deviation theory, the limit here would be a limit in n. So. How do, do I connect a? Uh, well, the limit in n is uh, is implicit in in here. So there is a further limit in in uh, in n because of this uh, uh, because you are evaluating this this object in a in a large n setting, right? 
Okay. Is, said, but... There is this, this, this integral that you need to evaluate using the Laplace, Laplace method. Yeah, yeah, I see, but uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so the, the... So Enrico is asking if I can repeat the question. I'm saying that the object that appears here in the box looks very much up to a logarithm and one over n to the so-called log moment generating function in large deviation theory, but the limit would be taken in uh, as n is going to infinity instead of a beta. And then there is a generic result uh, under certain condition that is called the Gartner Ellis theorem that gives you access from, if you can compute this thing for any s, <laughs> Then from the in from the Laplace trans the, from the um, the convex conjugate, which is the operation that has done uh, Pierre Paolo there, you recover the large deviation function. And I was trying to connect this large the, the classical large deviation approach that I just described, where n is going to infinity, with what is written there, yeah. where instead b is going to infinity. Yeah, I, is, I think this this is also a bit bit misleading in the sense that this limit has already been taken in some sense the limit has already been been taken when when you are writing that log z over over beta is minus e mean okay so that that was that was a slightly misleading of course the, the limit has already been taken inside but then there is a further limit n to infinity which uh, which of course you, you you need to assume in here to be able to use the laplace method for this uh, for this integral so maybe maybe this maybe the source of confusion was that I left uh, I left a limit that in in reality we had already used. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so the 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 goal is then to extract this function phi of uh, phi of s from this strange uh, double limit, and if we we are able to extract this function phi of s uh, by this uh, inverse. Legendre uh, transform, we should be able to access the full distribution of the e min of the normalized e min in the large n limit. And this is one of the rare examples in which uh, it's a problem where actually all these steps can be can be carried out essentially until the end. So uh, it seems increasingly unlikely that I will be able to do that. But uh, but uh, in in principle, this uh, this program can uh, can work until the end. Okay, um, all, all we have to do is to perform this double, double scaling limit of an object that we had already computed though. So we can leverage on what we, we did just, uh, just a few minutes ago. So I, I'm just recalling the... Uh, fact that Z to the power N we, we computed it as exponential minus n over two phi min, sorry, phi evaluated in q min. So by comparing this object with the fact that in the double scaling limit, We want this object to go as some g of s exponential of n phi of s. We can compare these two relations and obtain that phi of s, our quantity of interest, is minus one over two, the limit. of phi n evaluated in q min. But phi n evaluated in q min, we have it. We just computed. So phi n evaluated in q min was alpha n log of one plus beta minus beta q plus alpha log one plus beta q plus sigma square n divided by one plus beta one minus q. And then we have minus n log 
one minus q minus log one plus q n over one minus q. That was, that was the result that we had. And now we have to substitute every occurrence of little n with s over beta. So this becomes an s over beta. This becomes an s over beta. This becomes an s over beta. And this becomes an s over beta. So we, we have it. We, we also have to do something, something else though, because of course we, we want to extract some information in the case, in the interesting case where the, the system is incompatible typically. So when, when the average of E min is strictly larger than, than zero. And you remember that to extract some, something, so we want to be above alpha critical, right? Because otherwise the, the, the problem is, is much less, uh, less interesting. The problem is, is always or on average uh, compatible and it's not very, very interesting. We want to know when the problem is not compatible, how, how is the, the distribution of the, of the loss around, around the, average, the average value. So in order to, to tackle this region, we need to assume this double scaling limit between beta and Q. Right, so we need to assume that Q, so that beta one minus Q is V, which implies that Q is one minus V over beta. So all you have to do now is to replace one minus V over beta every time you find a Q, okay? And if you, if you, to that, it's uh, you get something like phi n of q min, which is alpha s over beta log of one plus b. plus alpha log of one plus s sigma square plus one minus v over beta divided by one plus v minus s over beta log what is what is one minus q is v over beta minus log one plus S over beta, one minus V over beta divided by V over beta. So one minus Q is always V over beta. So now you have something that you can evaluate in the limit beta to infinity, which is the, the limit that you, that you want. Okay, just uh, take take out, compute the limit beta to uh, infinity. You don't have to divide anything here. You just, you just kill the terms that, that don't survive the limit. So uh, this term is, uh, is killed. Some part of these terms are, are killed. Uh, this term is killed and some part of this term are, are killed and some others survive. So in the limit beta to infinity, what survives is something like alpha log one plus S sigma square plus one divided by one plus V minus log one plus S over V. This we call this function function phi of s comma p, which is the central, the central object that we need to, we need to analyze. We have, uh, we have essentially performed this, uh, this step and, and what remains is, is this function phi, okay?
Good. So how do we get uh, an equation for uh, V? Of course, there, there is still an equation for V in the game that we need to, to impose. V will, is going to be a function of S in this, uh, in this problem. Only S must, uh, must survive. What we do is we take the off-diagonal condition and we replace this, uh, this, uh, this condition there. And then we take the limit beta to infinity. Okay. So if we do that, oops, raising too much. That's fine. So what we get is the off diagonal uh, condition uh, written replacing every occurrence of Q with one minus V over B. Remember there was a Q in the numerator and well, you can check your notes, but uh, this is, if I'm not mistaken, what you will uh, obtain. This must be equal to This was a Q plus sigma square, and I'm replacing one minus V over beta plus sigma square. Then we have one plus V, and then we have one plus V plus S over beta times beta, one minus V over beta, which was a Q plus sigma square. It's, it's just a not very interesting way of replacing every occurrence of Q with with its correct, correct value, okay? And now uh, if we, uh, if we uh, send beta to infinity, uh, this becomes, uh, this simplifies uh, a lot and you get an equation for V, which is of this, of this form. One plus V one plus V plus S, one plus sigma square. Of course, uh, maybe uh, some of you might have noticed that uh, the, okay, I, I started from the off diagonal conditions, but of course the very same equation for, for V, I could have obtained by doing what? By simply differentiating this, this object with respect to V and setting this, this derivative equal to zero. And you can check that the two results, uh, the two results would, uh, would agree, okay? It is just a sanity, sanity check that we, are, that we are doing the same, the same. Uh... So th this one is the off diagonal condition, is the, the condition for, for the replicas, uh, the replica uh, inverse. In, inverse. So this, this equation provides V as a function of S, where S is the Laplace, Laplace parameters that, that I will need to act with the Legendre transform to get the right function in, in real space. Okay, just to... Good, um, the only problem that we have uh, here is that this uh, at some point will uh, become um, a, a pretty mm, horrible uh, equation to solve. And uh, <laughs> so let, let me proceed. Let me see what, uh, what I can do. So this object here is uh, what we call their capital Phi of S comma V, but now this V is a V of S itself, okay? So the object that I want is just minus one half, this, this guy here, where V solves this, this equation. That's, that's the flow of, uh, of information. I need to solve, solve this, plug it back in here and put a minus one half in front. Okay, so let me just see what, Necessary to do. The program essentially can be 
carried out until the end with a couple of uh, tricks. I don't know how much time I have, 10 minutes maybe. So my rate function in, in real space, we said uh, must be equal to an inverse uh, Legendre uh, transform, right? But we, we said that phi is minus a half capital phi. So this minus E, S star plus one half phi of S V of S, where of course S and V of S must be S uh, S star. So this we can write as uh, capital phi minus two, where S star is found as a function of e hat solving the following problem. So e hat must be equal to minus phi prime evaluated in S, S star. So this is one of the total derivative of capital phi with respect to S evaluated in S equal to S star, but phi is a function of two variables, S and V of S. So you need to take the derivative with respect to the first argument and the derivative with respect to the second argument uh, using the chain rule. But the derivative with respect to the second argument is zero because of the stationarity uh, condition. Okay. So what remains is really just the derivative of phi partial derivative of SV with respect to S using S is equal to S, S star. So the, the, the program I think is, is relatively clear. It is just a matter of, uh, of algebra in, uh, in solving this equation or trying to solve this. And unfortunately it, it's not going to be possible to give an explicit solution of this, uh, of this object and uh, uh, plug it back in here and, and compute one derivative, okay? The derivative with respect to phi uh, can, be, uh, can be computed here. So the derivative, sorry, with respect to S can be computed. So you get that E hat is one over two of what? Of this guy, differentiated. So we get one plus S minus the derivative of this object, which is one plus S over V. And here I put a one over V. So this is the, uh, this equality that connects uh, S with uh, E hat. I mean, S is S star, of course. And if you massage this equation a bit, you can show that this is equivalent to E hat equal to one over two V v plus s star. Okay, so now, now what, what you have to do is to use this, this equation here and uh, connect it with, with, this, uh, with this equality here because everything in the end must be a function of E alone, right? So we have, we have many, many things in, in the game. We have S star, which is a function of E, 
e hat u, through this equation, but we also have v of s star, which is connected to a star by this equation. So we need to find a clever way to put, to put these three elements together. And the best thing you can do is to rewrite this, uh, this expression in uh, using this simple term in the following cubic equation, which is uh, the source of all problems here. So you have a cubic equation where A is one plus sigma square over two E hat. So the connection between V and, and E hat is via cubic equation that unfortunately we cannot solve in general in, in the full space of, uh, of parameters. And also we cannot, we cannot study very, uh, you know, I mean, we, we can solve it of course, but we, we, we get a messy, messy expression that is not very, uh, very uh, illuminating. And also we cannot analyze uh, bounds because we know that the V for example, must be positive uh, because of the way we have defined, defined it. And uh, this, this bound is very hard to, to read off from, uh, from this equation in terms of, of, of here. So what you have this final result, which is first final result. And the second final result is uh, the expression for L. Expression for L, which is here. The only one that I erased. There is an alpha missing. Yeah, just just here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Thank yes, you. Enrique, you were right. Thank you. Just one for you. Okay, now that I've corrected it, I can erase it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm extremely concerned. Okay, so essentially the uh, putting putting together all the elements that we have uh, that we have here including this cubic equation, we have an expression for L of E, which I'm just reporting for uh, completeness. So this is the large deviation function for the minimal uh, loss, which is something that you can plot, uh, but it's still not, completely trivial to plot it because uh, it is parametrically given in terms of this V function. And V function uh, is an implicit function of, uh, of e, e at given by this, by this cubic. Okay. So, so, so you need to solve, to solve them uh, together. Okay. You have V is given in terms of V and, and, and then you have, and uh, the, the plot in, of course, as a minimum, which is also a zero at E, e min, which is uh, the average value of E min over uh, N. It is the, the quantity that we have computed at the end of the previous uh, previous hour, and then it has it has some some typical large deviation shape. the The problem is that first problem we we don't know the range of validity in uh, in uh, in E because there will be some some conditions on on the positivity of V that comes from this cubic equation, and this is this is very hard to to find it in, it hasn't been done, right? So this, this equation imposes uh, the fact that V is a function of E hat. 
but we have a constraint on V because V must be positive. Remember that V was this object. So a constraint of positivity on this object uh, imposes a constraint on, may impose some constraint on, on E hat. Yeah? So the, there is an argument. Uh, there is an argument of uh, like sign sign permanence. Uh, so you can follow one route from a couple of limiting uh, limiting results that you that that are known. So so you use an argument uh, like perturbative perturbative argument where you switch off one of the parameters. I don't remember it exactly, but then then you add it up like. A small small one and then this this by continuity you follow one one of the solution sorry yeah it's a continuity argument yes um so so there is there is a constraint that that we cannot we cannot work out very uh, very easily from the cubic equation like from the sign i, I know that in principle everything can be done it's a, it's a cubic equation it's not but but with, with so many parameters in there it's uh, it's it's hard to find a very explicit um, result, and then we have a second second problem potential problem here, which is I discussed with many of you already, um, which is that for a for a very similar problem for which the very same approach was was used, uh, and this is a paper by Fyodorov and and Ledusal, um, on this uh, quadratic quadratic form plus uh, magnetic field type of symmetry breaking term. Um, the minimization of this uh, problem leads to a rate function obtained using this, this method uh, that has been uh, proven correctly, but only up to a certain point, and then disproved after a certain point. So there is a result by uh, Dembo and uh, Zeytuni who proved that in this very similar result that uses the same technique, uh, the uh, rate function computed using the replicas is, is correct up to a certain point, but then the rigorously correct result is, uh, is another, follow another branch. So, we don't have the corresponding rigorous result for this class of problems. And, and that's what we, we really miss because it, it will be very important to have another comparison. This is one of the first example that, examples that I know where a full, R, full replica symmetric calculation on pretty much, you know, a, a quite with mild assumptions, I, I would say, is rigorously disproven, at least in a range of, uh, in, in a range of the, Final uh, rate rate function, and we don't understand exactly what what went wrong in this uh, in the process. Yeah. In for for this problem, it is it is certainly quadratic. So this this has been done. It has it has Gaussian Gaussian fluctuations around around e min for this problem. I'm not entirely sure about the problem with Fyodorov and Dussel by. Uh, uh, I would I would imagine so. So this this is done in in Rochelle's uh, thesis, the the uh, expansion around the minimum. Um, so yes, that's uh, that's uh, that's possible to to do. But it, it is an easier it is an easier thing to to check, of course. Uh, but um, but yeah. So I I think I mm, I hope I convince you that that this is a very rich problem that can be tackled from, from different angles. We have a non-trivial uh, results on the fact that, uh, that even under complete systems in presence of nonlinear constraints can be incompatible. And we have a puzzle, a potential puzzle, of course. Uh, it's, so I, I, I urge rigorous people that are listening to, to try to tackle this problem because we, we really need a second example where that confirms or disproves this, this calculation, even for a tiny, even if for, for a tiny region of the, of the phase uh, space. 
So with, with this, I conclude. I'll, I'll of course take any, any question and just let me say that it's been a real uh, thrill and a great uh, privilege to be, uh, to be here. And uh, well, I, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed it at least as much as I did. Thank okay, very thanks very much. Questions? Run, <laughs>